Hello, my name is Art Scrimo. I'm one of the product managers at Cisco that focuses on Data Center Network Manager, otherwise known as DCNM. Today we're going to do a short uh, introduction video to slow drain analysis, which is one of the features inside of DCNM 10 to 1 uh, that allows administrators to find slow drain type problems in their environment. In order to do this, uh, you come under monitor and uh, slow drain analysis. Uh, once you're at the screen, you can select your scope, which is essentially what, what we're doing here. Um, so your scope is a fabric. And in this case, I've got four different fabrics out here that I'm managing um, with my DCNM server. So I'm going to select my biggest fabric here, and I'm going to select my duration. Now, if I select once and I click start, it will just start a job for 10 minutes based on what I have selected. However, I can also change my duration to set up a daily job. So under this daily job, I can say I'd like this to run for one hour starting at whatever time you would like. So 12, a lot of times I suggest to customers that they start at the busiest time of their night, which is typically when backups are running. Um, uh, which which may be midnight for you or some other time or also targets the busiest time of the day whether you have transactions going on or uh, big end of day crunches happening um, that's a good time to do it as well because you'll probably see uh, peak utilization throughout your fabrics during that time um, also a new feature of 1021 is you can actually email the results once this is complete so we can set it to start uh, it will end a year later um, so it'll just run every single day for one hour and you can have the results emailed to whoever you want to, right? So we're just going to run one job uh, and I'm just going to run it for 10 minutes and I'm going to click the start button. So what's happening now is it's starting a new job. Um, the last one I ran for about two minutes or so um, and I did get some pretty decent results. This is a test environment or a QA environment. Um, inside of one of the Cisco labs and uh, we definitely have some traffic happening um, as well as uh, you'll see in just a few minutes we're, we're actually having quite a few problems happen in this fabric right now probably because of data generation and those types of things that we're doing. Before we leave the screen I can see that uh, my job is collecting this is the last job I ran uh, it's completed uh, and uh, uh, there's a couple of the things I wanted to talk about on this page and then we'll go look at the results. So the collection configuration information is an absolute great area of the of this feature that explains what all of the counters are that we're about to go investigate. It explains what credit losses and link resets and timeout discards. And if you've seen any other, other slow drain presentations done by Cisco, we're essentially leveraging the same counters uh, in order to find fiber channel flow control type problems within your environment. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to continue to let this run, but I'm going to click on this uh, other job that I ran just a few minutes ago. Uh, and I only ran it for two minutes, and um, the results are pretty staggering, actually. Uh, there's quite a few things going on, and you can see that they're denoted by the different colors. Now within this, you can see that there's a slider bar here up at the top that shows you when some of the data was collected. And I, like I said, I only ran it for two minutes. so. But what you'll see is as I start to slide this, you'll see that that data changes. Uh, you'll see like the level one data here changes because every collection interval, which is every 10 seconds while this is running, we're getting different counters. So there's an active problem going on within this fabric. And as you can see, as we get closer, the numbers go down uh, because the numbers uh, change. And actually some of them will even fall off of the screen as they don't meet the criteria anymore um, based on the timing. So I'm going to zoom this back out to full view here and we'll go we'll go all the way out to here as well. Uh, if you want to you can put in a specific time that you're looking for you can certainly do that. Um, you can also use the zoom functions over here where you can use max. Um, you can see there's another job going on um, or there's another job that's that's run. Um, so there's a lot of great information out here. <clears throat> so what am I looking at? So the data shows me uh, we've got all these counters that I was just talking about that's up in this collection configuration area. And those are all denoted in their own column. Now we have some level one, some level two, and level three. So what does that mean? Level one is the least severe problem. So typically it means um, that there are problems potentially on the horizon and we're starting to see problems. 
but it's not as severe as a level three problem. So a level three problem is things like credit loss, resets, uh, which are very, um, very impacting. Uh, discards as well can be impacting as well, but level one information tends to just be more, I don't want to say notification, but it is sort of an indicator of a problem that is uh, less severe. Um, so what this means to me is I look through this table here, and I've looked at this data quite a bit, um, I can see that we've got some pretty busy ports. So this one here is pretty busy. Um, it looks like it's a Unity. I can click on that, and I can actually see a chart of when these problems occurred and what the value was during that time. Um, I can see there's another, looks like another, I'm not really sure what this is. Uh, looks like another host interface here. Um, and it's pretty busy as well. And it's it's the one that's the busy here is the RX buffer to buffer timeouts to zero. All the other ones have zeros, right? So you can see that those are X'd out. Uh, so that's really what the problem is here. It's, it's receive buffer to buffer credit on the, on the port uh, FC1 slash 15 is going to zero. Um, and it, but it's not staying at zero very long. The reason why I know that is because I don't see TX weight incrementing as well. So if I see TX weight incrementing and buffer to buffer timeouts to zero, that indicates not only are they getting to zero, but they're staying at zero for at least 2.5 microseconds, um, which is an indicator of uh, the actual value of TX weight. Um, so you can see there's quite a few hosts in here right, or storage or switch ports that are having, uh, that are essentially busy. Now, what's interesting is that I'm only seeing this group, which is actually a pretty large group uh, of ports. However, if I were to go turn this filter on, which is on by default, um, I can see all of the ports in this fabric. So as you can see, there's a lot of ports, right? And so part of the difficult thing of slow drain is trying to indicate or find where problems are. Um, that's one of the great things about this filter, and it's what I refer to as, as the needle in the haystack. It really gets you in on focusing on what are the ones that are most important. And we color code those as well based on the decimal point. So as we see how severe a problem is, um, how big the number is, we color code it so that you know exactly what to look for. Now also, you can sort by specific columns. So if you want to look by TX buffer to buffer, you can or you can look by RX buffer to buffer as well, or you can look by switch name, however you want to do it. Uh, there's, a, there's a host of different ways in which you can look at this data, uh, and it is filtered already, so you can filter based on different criteria also. Uh, there's a lot of great information uh, within slow drain analysis, and this really helps customers to try to pinpoint and find problems inside their environments. Uh, and I encourage you, if you don't have DCNM today, to get it installed in your lab. You get a 30-day trial license. Uh, go out there and run it. Uh, you might be surprised what you'll find out there. Um, and you can definitely help get ahead of the game as it re relates to fiber channel flow control in problems inside your environment. Thanks again for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.